Well, well, well. Welcome to the Architects of Fate streaming extravaganza. That's right. You found the self-proclaimed original Twitch TTRPG stream that lets you shake up our world. Now pay attention because this is how it works. If you'd like to add some loops to this roller coaster ride of the show, you're gonna need fake chips. Now these magical loyalty points can be earned just by watching, following, posting, subscribing, or just engaging with us in the chat. It's like free money, Pete. With your fate chips, you can use your powers as an architect to heal your favorite players, summon items that will make their adventure a lot easier, or a lot harder. You can even make players say or sing outrageously silly things. Think of those possibilities. But, but wait, wait, wait. There is more. You can also toss our unsuspecting heroes into random encounters that will leave them sweating, strategizing, and questioning their life choices. All it takes is a quick redeem command in the chat. You choose the item or action and the player you want to mess with, and we'll take it from there. So sit back, relax, and prepare yourselves for a mind-blowing spectacle of storytelling and mayhem. We've got adventure. We've got drama and more surprises than a clown car at a kid's birthday party. So let's go! Welcome all you architects of fate and well and welcome back. Or hello, all you architects of fate, and welcome back. I've got it English today, I swear. Welcome back to another exciting and and a mysterious campaign session of Conan Adventures in an Age Undreamed, where we will be exploring the lands and realms of, 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 I'm wow. Worried. I am so much bad on, on uh, words today. This is toast burning. Does anybody else smell toast? Um, <laughs> Oh, um, I must be the haircut. You, you took away some of the insulation. <laughs> <laughs> um, back into uh, Robert E. Howard's world of Conan, the barbarous, dark world of Conan. Barbarous? Barbarous? Barbaric? Barbarous. I like barbarous. Barbarous sounds barbarous good. Barbarous is a word. Yeah. Bar is there a difference between barbarous and barbaric? <clears throat> I could tell you, but I can charge you by the hour. All right. Well, I, well, me and lawyers get along. So, <laughs> I'll be playing the part of Crom, the god who cares not for your worries. With me tonight, I have uh, a fabulous cast, as always. First off, most importantly, our man behind the scenes, genius keeping us running, and the uh, the one that really keeps gets this all set up, and that would be Nat, our moderator. Then we have our players with us tonight. We have Zang, the exotic emissary from far off Kitai. We have Abertak, the zealous witch hunter. <laughs> we have Thornitius, the Bosonian ranger and, and archer. And finally, we have Zinnia, the mercenary queen herself. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have with us at the moment our assassin. Hopefully, they'll be able to join us later. But, uh, you know, Simper Gumby, stay flexible. Always flexible. We find ourselves, after the last couple of sessions, in a bit of an interesting position. You see, in the prior session, um, unfortunately, you guys weren't there, so I'll, we'll... I'll give it a brief, brief recap, and then if your fellow players want to give you more details, that would be great. But long story short, uh, you have found out, or have been informed at least, that the Keeper of Souls um, is the name of somebody who uh, tried to take over the kingdom and, and nearly succeeded before being foiled by a series of adventurers and was killed 60 years ago in the town called Shamar to the south. Um, 
which is also the town that you had heard heard of during the feast, being known for people having bad dreams, earthquakes, a high suicide rate, etc. That's the very, very, very short version. Um, Abertech and Thornicius, if you guys would care to give a little bit more information on what you did and didn't do and or discover in the prior session, and please don't leave out any of the details about the Cthulhu uh, excrement. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> there was no explosion of extra-dimensional waste in the sewers while we were down there. Oops. <laughs> that would have been ridiculous. No. I don't know. Uh, the most interesting thing I think we learned, though, was uh, that really all we had to do was like ask the right questions of the right people to figure out who this Keeper of Souls person is. We still don't know for a fact that like somebody they killed 60 years ago is legit back. It could be a ruse. Um... We met. Uh, we went to Temple of Mitra. That was super interesting. Uh, our very rich prince here is going to be sponsoring a temple out in the uh, to take you know to off to the heathens to take the word of Mitra. And that's you how met we with High talk. Priest Varric, not to be confused with High Priest Valisi. What is the difference between Varric and Valisi? Uh, one's name is Varric, and he's fat. One's name is Valisi, and he's the one that the, the Darrens are proud supporters of. But we didn't really get any sense that there's like a divide between the two of them or anything. At least not at first. You also didn't bring up Varric other than to say, um, we're staying with the Darrens. Yeah. For Valisi. Okay, so the party has rested in the Darren household once again. Um, and it is uh, now morning time. The party wakes up, rested, refreshed, grab, you know, the, have one of the household servant slaves uh, bring some bread and cheese and breakfasty things. Uh, and I don't know, are any of you like, relaxing out on one of the balconies, having a smoke, heading into the house or anything, or are you just waking up maybe Does or maybe not grabbing library? paper? Say what? Does he have a, like a library? Uh, yes, so the very first room that you were taken to when you met Tiber was in his library slash study. There were lots of uh, various artifacts, historical artifacts um, and the like there. If I wouldn't be intruding or trespassing, I'd like to look for a map of Shamar that I could make some notes about. Yeah, um, so actually that would be pretty simple. Um, your emissary lets you know that it would probably be polite to, to let somebody from the household know what you're doing. You know, can you show me the maps? Yeah. Um, um, so you grab one of the servants and you have them send for Tiber since he's kind of the friendly one for you. And Tiber's like, yeah, I'll show you where they are. And uh, Tiber takes you into the study where you had met uh, Isaac Darren the Elder the first time. Um, and uh, as he's kind of reaching around, he pulls out a, I don't even know what to call it. It's, it's not a book. It's not a journal. It's like a trapper keeper made out of leather that's about atlas. yay big. Yeah. It's like an app. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in, inside of it are a bunch of parchment maps, some obviously in better quality, some newer than others. Um, and he kind of flips through some of those pages, folds through some of those pages to pull out a, a map of Southern Ophir. Um, so what the map shows you, what you kind of pull from that, uh, actually give me a, uh, no, I don't want the Conan books. I want my characters. Fate campaign. Uh, uh, give me a sorcery still. Survival. Uh, It'd be lore. 
Unless Michael's character has anything better to do with his time, I'm, I'm probably going to see if he wants to help me look at some maps and figure out our route there, etc. So let me I can give it. roll lore. Yes, uh, we, we need to find the most expeditious route to the very first <clears throat> tavern so we can quickly burn that one down and get on with the rest of the thing. You know? <laughs> Uh, all right, so that is one, that is two successes yep, of lore, two. because you have two expertise in there, yep. Uh, so, yeah, as you're, as you're diving through, uh, kind of the maps of Sun and Ophir, what you find, I actually didn't expect you to do this, this is, this is really helpful that you do, um, either mark down or note down, if I forget, having done this, you're going to get a bonus in the future for any sort of a, regional knowledge information. You're going to get an extra point of momentum for free okay. um, for any sort of regional information stuff in the near future. Um, as you're diving through this, you find some notes, some appendices. Um, and basically what this map shows is on the very northern edge of the map, sl centered and slightly off map, is a note that says Kerala. That's the city that you're in, the capital city of Ophir. And then there is a river, the about halfway between on the map to the going east west is a river. Kerala is basically where that river goes from north south to east west. So the river kind of does a 90 degree turn. Um, and this map shows everything south of that river. Um, the first thing that you note is between here and Shamar, the city that you're pointing at, there. Uh, it has lists, different um, names, fief domains, like who, who is the lord that has been granted a uh, title and estate over such area. Uh, so you see, you see several various fiefdoms. Um, they're actually smaller than you would expect. It seems like the, uh, it, it seems like there are lots of families given to lots of little parcels of land rather than any one large parcel of land that you might see. So there are lots of noble families, each with various holdings. Um, however, as to answer your individual question, the main road coming out of Kerala to the south is the King's Road. The King's Road goes a little bit windy through terrain, but almost directly to Shamar. And then from Shamar, it goes to the southeast through a mountain pass, which is the only major route available to leave Ophir from the east or the south. Hmm. So if you're looking at the map on the Roll20 right now, um, you'll see the east, eastern edge and the southern edge of Ophir are bounded by mountains. And there is a major pass between Ophir and Koth to the southeast. Shamar is on the King's Road to that pass. It is in nice, fertile, rolling hills, and it's not at the pass, but it is um, the it is the second largest town, um, and probably the town that has the most sort of like uh, foreign nationals, the most sort of immigration, the most sort of non Ophirian things. Um, so, if you look at the Roll Twenty map, uh, Shamar is the big town south of Kerala. Um, and you'll see the road going from Kerala to that town and then from that town towards the mountain passes towards Kof. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. The, the town just beneath the eye, yep. that is Shamar. Okay. All right. So some of the notes that you find the forest to its west um, is, uh, is, has a single owner, has a single lord assigned to that whole forest area, which is one of the largest regions um, of single lord fiefdoms that you see. That entire forest has a single lord. Um, you see to the East, there is a smaller town, uh, and I can't remember the name of that outpost offhand, um, and then a forest there. That forest is haunted. Let's basically, quickly basically mix those so, labels up. Here there be monsters, uh, basically, in that forest. Here there be monsters. Uh, 
the mountains are listed as dangerous, uncontrolled wilderness. Um, in some of the appendices, you see handwritten in very old print, obviously not written in the last 10 or 20 years. So either by Isaac Darren the Elder when he was a child or maybe by his parents or his grandparents, things about um, potential expansion or potential growth or you know maybe places to try to build build uh, build outposts in the name of the king sort of thing. A uh, couple a couple of places of point there. There's an old fort here or there is a, a mountain pass there. A couple of identification type pieces for some of the reason regions in those eastern mountains. Uh, the southern mountains are considered no man's land. Very, very difficult terrain between Ophir and Koth. There are no known major passes through the southern mountains other than the Trader's Pass to the southeast corner. Trader or Trator? Trader's Pass. The, the, main, the, main, the main market caravan route between Ophir and Koth to the southeast. Um, <coughs> Now that pass is one of the most heavily defended points in the entirety of Ophir. Massive garrison. There's not really walls, but there are there 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 are multiple watch posts, multiple towers, and you see all this marked on this map since you got two successes. As one of the most well defended and well garrisoned points in all of Ophir. Um, but the pass between the mountains itself is relatively narrow. It's only maybe 10 or 20 miles wide, which 10 or 20 miles sounds like quite a lot, but there's no way you could get armies through there without being spotted in the paths itself. But yeah, the King's Road is the route from here to there. It's probably, a, if you had to guess, between three and six days, depending on how fast you travel. Hmm. From here to Shamar. So, uh, what was what would that be? I don't know. 120, 150 miles? We'll say 120 miles. Interesting. All right. Because a typical person can, a, a typical group or a caravan can do, um, if they move at a decent pace, 20 miles in a day. If they're oxen drawn and very heavily laden, maybe only 10 to 15 miles in a day. A heavy caravan might only be able to do 10 to 15 miles in a day, whereas just a group of folks moving along on foot could easily do 20, 25. And if you're hurrying for a reason, you could do 30, or if you're willing to take some resistance, some 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 exhaustion, you could even do 40 miles in a day if you are really hoofing it. All right, then. Well, now we have some information. Observation check, please, for you and Zhang, who are the only two that have stated that you are in the building looking at maps. I do like maps. They help me not stumble into traps. Is that one success? Depends on what your stats are. Zing! Observation 11 and 2. That is indeed one success. I got one. Okay. One success. You note, now mind you, it's pretty early in the morning. Like, it, it's barely 7.15, 7.30. Like, it's early in the morning here, right? Breakfast hasn't even been served to the whole household. Um, and you note, let me get exactly to my notes, that way I write, read this out correctly. Uh, you note, High Priest Valisi. He runs through the Great Hall, of which this study uh, is beside. He is through the Great Hall, with the household servants catching up to him. Mm -hmm and heads to the back private dining areas that you dined at two nights prior. Could you uh, give me and an insight check? And closes the door behind him quickly. Could you give me an insight check to judge whether what his emotional state is? 
absolutely roll insight. No. In fact, I think he's going up to bake a banana cream pie. And I have... <laughs> wait, 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 hang on a second. I think I have to listen to you roll inside. I'm going to reroll 1d20. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you're rerolling the 20. Otherwise, I'm going to have fun with this. Oh, what you roll another 20? Hey. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, well, that's, that's, that goes from a complication to a single success. <laughs> that challenge is good. <laughs> so uh, here's what you can tell. As he's rushing in, you, um, uh, he, he sees you in the study, and he doesn't stop rushing to talk to you guys, um, but he does seem... He is in a hurry, and this is an unexpected visit. This does not seem planned or intentional. He is in a hurry. This is an unexpected visit, uh, but he didn't seem to specifically... He, he wasn't coming there for you. Oh, shit. What's his name? So Tiber? Tiber. Oh, this is where I wish we had... You know what? I wouldn't do that without our... Without, uh... A rogue around. I mean, I mean, Tiber is I, your friend too, even if Verai in particular brought him under her wing. No, no, what I mean is, I would love to be able to uh, be like, oh, I wonder uh, coincidentally where a uh, person might be able to uh, hear what was happening in that room. But I don't, I, I, I do not have the skill to pull that off. I most not what your character would do. Well, he might do it, but he might he might ask the question, but then he would make somebody, you know, uh, sneakier than him go be the actual listener. Right, right. Well, you do still have one stealthy person in your party that's here today. The archer. I know. The sender. Why don't you go grab him? Mm. And... Uh, To be honest, he's more stealthy than the assassin. Oh, really? Well, yeah. then, why don't you go grab him and... Uh, he has a 15 in stealth. A 15! You can stay and talk. Oh, yeah. 15 in stealth. The timer, if I... Uh, I wanted to overhear what was happening in that room on accident, of course. Where should I where should I definitely not be so that I make sure not to eavesdrop on that conversation? <laughs> I'm gonna need a DC one persuasion check. I'm not that persuasive, actually. DC one. Get just get one success on persuasion. I can't guarantee that. I, you know, we'll see here. Yeah, no. Nope. That was close. Uh, he says, um, yeah, my father's private business is probably supposed to be private. I get it. I get it. Does really he normally come through here doing that? Uh, no, I, I mean, he's, he's always welcome here and he's, con he's consistently invited here. My father is one of his, uh, truest adherents, I guess you could say. But not um, generally in a rush for breakfast. Yeah, I, I don't know that I've ever seen the high priest here this early morning before. I wonder what's going on. And I wonder if I'll ever be told because if I every time I've ever asked before, I've just been told it's not my business and it doesn't matter to me. And and uh, what the hell are you doing in here? Get the fuck out of here! Yeah, well, it'd be a shame if you overheard the conversation. You know, I've tried that a few times and been more than the, more than a little bit got my tan tied. 
Tide tanned. Very well then. So, Crom, is there any uh, tea in that whiskey of that whiskey and tea of yours? Actually, I poured a lot more whiskey in here than I intended, but my wordlessness is just because my That's brain. Just- never got started today. I woke up and just my brain wasn't quite right and I haven't been fully functioning here today. But I've only had this much whiskey. What? It's Maker's Mark. In any I case, Maker's. I make off to uh, recruit our stealthy, stealthy archer for some stealthy, stealthy eavesdropping. Oh. So, uh, are you sleeping in, Thornicius? Getting a nice, good, long sleep? Well, I would have been up already, but uh, okay. not have ventured out, probably. Wait, you just just sitting out on the balcony having a smoke? Yeah, yeah, had a smoke. You see uh, Zhang coming in uh, from, from the main household to, to the guest house. You see him coming across. Zhang, you see him on a balcony just kind of sitting there drinking a cup of coffee. Are there any? Uh... There are household uh, staff within earshot. Yes. Ah, yes. Now you could like go in the building, but I'm just saying like you're halfway across the yard and see him up there. Yeah, and I'm gonna shout out, "Hey, can you come eavesdrop on the, <laughs> the homeowner?" No. Um, I'm gonna. Hey, there are issues. Come with me. We 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 want to show you a map. Okay, should I grab Xenia? Uh, no, no, she'll be fine with that. Okay. All right, so I get my stuff together, and as I pass Xenia on the way out, I'm like, hey, I'm heading over to the main house, I guess. Uh, Zhang wants to be for something. Just letting you know where I'll be. Okay. He takes a minute to come out, because uh, he was grabbing his things, but a minute or two later, he comes out to the yard. And as we're walking towards the uh, the library, you'll note that I'm taking a brisk pace, and I will. Uh, I'll ask. Hey, so how good are you at the uh, sneaking about and maybe eavesdropping? Steve's dropping something. Well, Steve's are there trees involved, or is this like pillars and columns? What, what am I sneaking? Uh, I'll fill them in. The uh, the the head priest is here, and he was in a hurry. Oh, and we want to see if you can uh, put your stealth to use. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I think I will uh, duck into the um, coat room, and and. Uh, appropriate a house ca- uh, house guard or whatever whatever uh, <clears throat> servants wear in the house. The color. Okay. Servants yeah. uniform. Um, <laughs> Slip my hair back. <laughs> with with a one difficulty stealth check, um, you can get something that would never pass close inspection. Yeah. Uh, but if they're not paying attention, they might overlook you with one with one success on stealth. With two successes on stealth, um, you can be a little bit more. That's not good. You already rolled Roll again. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Wait a second. Do I get a re-roll? I know I get. I hope you get some re-rolls. Otherwise, I'm getting to have fun with that because there was a complication, ladies and gentlemen. Living shadow, when trying to remain unseen or unnoticed, you gain bonus momentum equal to the number of ranks in this talent. Uh, so you, talent. That's better than any of the talents under like melee or parrying. It's well, it gets a, you get a bonus die 20. You don't get to re roll a 20, uh, you get one bonus point die 20. So I have two successes and a complication. Two successes and a complication. I would rather have a re-roll than an extra dice, to be honest. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, so two successes and a complication. Um, yes. 
you change, uh, you are able to uh, find a couple of extra things. There's a little bit in the guest house, a little bit over here, a little bit in the servant's uh, room that you find. Um, and you are able to put together a, a, a quick household guardsman's outfit. Okay. Um, now, now that I've you got, got a bit of a helmet on, so hopefully people won't recognize your yeah, face. Like <laughs> um, but you are wearing the attire of a household guardsman. All right. Puff my chest out a little bit, make myself look like I should be here, and walk on down the main hallway uh, until I get to the doors. And are there any? Let me look around. Is there oh. any? Pause. So entrances. Advantage. Pause. Thorn. Oh. Roll an extra die 20 because Good Devil is taking care of you and is giving you an advantage. He loves me. So, he really loves um, me. In 5th edition, it's... it's <laughs> In fifth edition, for advantage, you get an extra die twenty. Take your pick of the of the two. Um, with the Modithia systems, there are multiple die twenties that you can roll for success, kind of like the White Wolf systems. Um, so for this, the translation for advantage would be a point of momentum, or basically an extra dice to roll that you can add to your score. Okay. Uh, so you rolled again, and that was not a twenty. At least that was not a twenty. At least a twenty is a complication. So I'm going to look around now and use my uh, perception to see if there's any, like, uh, servants, entrances, or, you know... Servants. Rather than perception, how about a society check? Well, I'm not good at that, but let, we can try that. Well, yeah, I'm rolling. I mean, you can roll perception, but a perception is going to tell you that you're in a coat closet. Ah. <laughs> Oh, eight and a six. Uh, that's two successes on lore, my friend. Oh, Mister, I'm not good at that. I <laughs> double succeeded. That's why his hand's right here. Yeah, not my hand's hand. Two successes at, uh, <laughs> at a uh, uh, society check. Sorry, that's only one success. I was looking at lore. Society's a seven. Still, one success. What you can assume from this sort of thing is if there's a dining, a private dining area, it's probably going to be next to a private kitchen area. I don't know. So then I heard myself over to the private kitchen area, following servants that, you know, would have like a tray in their hand or something. You indeed find yourself in a kitchen area that is next door to the dining area that you have been told this person is in. You are um, easily confused for a guard, but incredibly out of place mm -hmm. as an armed guard standing in front of a door in the kitchen. You are getting a lot of stink eye from the kitchen yeah, staff, says, although they're not saying anything. <laughs> Matt, this is a very important uh, uh, visit, and the master would like uh, the doors secured uh, so that he can finish his conversation quietly, undisturbed. Press security. But I've, but I've got the master's morning wine. Am I not allowed to go and serve? You may. Well, don't you have to test it for poison first? Ha! <laughs> Very funny. Um, okay, uh, now I need another observation check to see if you can hear what's being said. <laughs> okay, hmm. I've got one success, I think. And yeah, and uh, yes, we so we got the redemption. However, the bad weather dancing. I'm trying to figure out how to bring that in, Goliak, but I'm not forgetting about it. But I am trying to figure out how to bring that in in a relatively lore friendly fashion. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, what was your uh, success on observations? One? One, yeah. Okay. Um, so you do hear some things. Um, uh, as the voices raise a little bit and they kind of come through, um, you hear, uh, you hear um, Isaac Darren the Elder. I'm getting to the see if I can find the exact words if I've written down. Um, you hear you hear from Isaac Darren the Elder something um, hands of mercenaries something something you hear High Priest Belisi say um, it's safe um, and then you hear. A high priest Belisi saying, uh, the greater good. Uh oh. <laughs> and something, your faith in me. Isaac, you and then you hear Isaac Aaron, the elders, uh, voice again saying something. Um, yeah. And then you hear Isaac Darren, the elders, uh, voice saying something to the effect of, um, uh, basically, yes, father, yes, padre. As as you will it as you wish it, um, and then you hear Valisi's voice saying once again, uh, something something greatly rewarded. In the midst of all this, I'm over in the other house, just kind of listening to anybody that's around, see the talk, because they don't really know that I'm still here. They saw them leave. Sure. The doors kind of cracked open. Do I hear anything? Um, mostly what you hear, you hear some gossip that uh, that that one high priest is here again. Um, you hear some gossip about uh, that can't be good, or every time that happens, some every time that happens, we always have to clean up the mess, or <laughs> or another uh, another one. You hear you hear one person say. Has Tiber found out yet? No, I don't think so. Well, I'm not telling him. <laughs> um, you hear another one saying, uh, slaves aren't allowed to speak, shut your traps. Shut your trap. Okay. 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 <clears throat> I'll take what I've got and take it back to Zang and and discuss that I was only able to get so much. <clears throat> as you are on your way back, the complication comes into play. Darn. As somebody wearing several chevrons and 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 cords with knots on their shoulder, uh, as you're walking out of the kitchen, you there, what do you think you're doing in here? This isn't where the guards are supposed to stay. God, you're the gods had any patience for me that if I just could hire competent work you're supposed to be either on the patrol or on the watch and since I was just on the watch your patrols are probably supposed to be the ones on the outer on the outer yards and the perimeter what the hell are you doing in here son um yes sir sir yes sir got turned around sir pretty maid nice derriere it's just following I'm so sorry back to work <laughs> 
I'm gonna see you smoked for this sort of bullshit that you're pulling, trying to get in here to gawk at the kitchen staff, trying to get in here so, oh, which one of these is your girlfriend? I bet it's that one right there. Well, your girlfriend's about to watch you get smoked. Get your ass out to the training yard now. We're gonna see just what you can do. Sir, yes, sir. As he yells and berates you, all the way out the front door, yes, all three of you, the two of you see him being braided through the house. Veri, or sorry, not Veri, um, uh, Zinnia, you see him being braided across the yard. Uh, <laughs> some guy giving basic drill sergeant speech. I'm going to smoke your happy ass. We're going to just see how many push-ups you can do. You're going to be smoking until you puke. As he, um, uh, as he takes you to a training yard in the back, Mm -hmm. and starts yelling at you to start doing push-ups, push-ups, <laughs> push-ups. <laughs> well, we are about as well as I imagine. So yeah, that's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's hurt you. <laughs> you know what? If you want to be in here, if you want to be in with your staff, with your kitchen girlfriend and your household servants trying to break the damn rules. Let's see if you got it for the nightlife recruit. Let's get a dance on. As he gets a faraway look in his eyes. That's right. Everybody's about to dance. This is the dance we're taking right now. And he starts to dance. He throws one arm in front of him and one arm behind him, starts waving the arms back and forth while he thrusts his hip to the opposite of his arms. Let's do the time warp again. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, I, like, and as you look around, you see other folks in the training yard doing the same dance as him. Okay, there's in a synchronization good. with him. Ah, shit, there's, there's so many Cthulhu again. <laughs> there's just a hint of there's a smell of calamari. Oh no, not that again. <laughs> Sugar, honey, iced tea, let's get out of here. <laughs> Sugar, honey, iced tea. Hey, yeah. Sugar, honey, iced tea. Sugar, honey. <laughs> I honestly don't understand the redemption. I don't know. I don't know. But there is sugar, honey, and iced tea in my tea and whiskey. <laughs> Let's just say people love their acronyms. <laughs> sugar, honey, iced tea. I get it. I get it. That's what I started laughing for. My Sierra, mom Sierra Hotel, Oscar Tango. Yeah, Indigo. Yeah. Oscar Sierra yeah. Hotel. <laughs> Indigo <laughs> Tango. Dancing. She she dancing. dancing. Yeah. <laughs> Ay, she pa. Ay, she pa. Yeah, I'm slowly backing it's away. Oh. Uh, oh, oh, I'm going to need, I'm gonna need at least two successes on discipline. I said, let me come dance with you and not get you away. <laughs> Sorry, he got away. Uh, I believe that's just one success. I'll double check, but I'm pretty certain that's just one success as you start dancing. The Macarena. Your arms going in front like this, and then your arms going in front like that. And you're doing a hip thrust. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and this goes on for some time. Uh, Zinnia, you're watching all of this as, <laughs> as your party mate and the drill sergeant and all of the other guards around in this courtyard are dancing in synchronization, this strange defaulted, hip-thrusted to dance. Hmm. Maybe I should go down and save him and tell him I need a guard to uh, accompany me. Okay. 
sure if I could just stop dancing. <laughs> Resistance check. Hey! Ooh. Finally. <laughs> um, you see your party mate and companion, Zinnia, come out into this training courtyard where you are at, and it jiggles just something in your brain, just enough time to to stop dancing and realize that you're no longer being told to dance. You're not doing this to stay in character. You're just dancing, and everyone else seems to be completely like focused on dancing at the moment in this courtyard, including the drill sergeant that was smoking you. Um, and if there is a time to dip out, now might be that time. Yeah. Dipping. Let's go. Bye. <laughs> as Zinnia grabs you, as, as as you start to look back and your mm -hmm. arms start to do the dance again, and then she grabs you by the collar and mm -hmm. pulls you out of that training courtyard. Thor, oh, Nicias, and Zane, you saw your friend a minute ago, a couple of minutes ago now, get pulled by uh, a captain of the guards out of the house while he was yelling at him for gawking and flirting with the staff. Get inside so I can get out of this court. I'm staying out of it. I imagine he'll be back for court eventually. You mean that total stranger? I didn't. I didn't know who that was. <laughs> uh, you still just studying maps and things in the courtyard for a few minutes? In the library. In the library. Sorry, in the library. Yeah. All right. Um, a few minutes later, Zinnia and a slightly confused-looking, red-faced Thornicius, who is back to his normal attire, not the guard attire, um, comes into the library. Whoa. Hey. Learn. I don't have little things like... <laughs> Do I? You are, as far as you can tell, all you. Never mind <laughs> the tentacled earrings. Mm -hmm. Tentacled earrings? Dude! Where'd you get them from? <laughs> I want them. <laughs> <laughs> are they at least of a good metal I can sell them for something? <laughs> here to get here today, tentacle tomorrow. Tentacle tomorrow. <laughs> I'm amazed you aren't ripping those out of his ears. I don't. I don't even. We didn't even see what's going on out there. Man, frankly, the look of it. Not sure we want. You to do it. smell calamari. Smoke. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm afraid of. Anyways, so here we are. You make it into the room. Would do you pass on no, knowledge? I'm not I'm going to let actually Thornicius take a look at these maps too to make sure there's nothing that a ranger or a type wouldn't, you know, might have noticed that I wouldn't. Let me make my report real quick. So basically, they were in there talking and it sounded like the, oh. the, the, the priest had something important that he wants uh, the, the, what's his name? Isaac, the elder. Uh, to abide by. Uh, he heard a lot of trust me for the greater goods, um, but I didn't hear him very many details. Um, didn't sound like Isaac was too keen on the plan, but was going along with it because it was the, the priest telling him. So don't know what that's all about, but I'm sure that we'll figure it out when things start actually happening. And about that time, uh, for those, the four of you in the library, you see the high priest Velisi storming out through the grand hall and out through the front door. Can Without a word of goodbye. To talk with him? What's that? Can I use my command skill to talk with him? Because aren't, aren't I near my area? Are you uh, so you're all there. And in this case, a command skill is is kind of like, um, like running recruits or being a drill sergeant or being like a, a military sergeant, sending out commands and orders. Um, uh, you know, being being a leader, not necessarily grabbing somebody's attention, unless it's some sort of like 
military relation, kind of like the drill sergeant coming in there. It was command that the drill sergeant was using to, what the hell are you doing in here? Get your ass out there. We're going to, that sort of thing. Can I use my observation to stand by the door and see if I hear anything? Uh, yes, but you're not going to hear anything. He's basically just storming out of the house. He's not stopping to, or slowing down to talk to anybody. He's just going from that back dining room through the Great Hall, which you happen to be beside in the library, and then through the Great Hall right out the front door without stopping or slowing down. And a few moments later, you hear the voice of Isaac Darren the Elder... Um, he calls out for his, whatever his main butler's name is, Mr. Butler! <laughs> Mr. Butler! Get the adventurers and the youngest son. I need them all. Now! And <laughs> interesting. <laughs> What'd you say? This, this should be interesting. Oh. Um, as, as the Mr. Butler, um, comes out and goes, you guys heard that. that we heard, yeah, we heard. Dining room. Would you care for breakfast while you're in there? I think we've already had breakfast, but, uh, uh, yeah, I don't think we should make this any more awkward than it's already going to be. Yeah. Thank you, man. I'll bring coffee. Very good, sir. Um, and he takes, uh, and you walk around the corner to the dining room where Isaac Darren the Elder is, oh, that was fast. <laughs> uh, we were in the library looking at some maps. Okay. Um, I trust yeah. all as well? Uh, well, <clears throat> have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. Mr. Butler comes back in with with coffees for everyone. Thank you, my lord. And I will sit uh, at his desk and I... Yeah. And he, he takes a minute. He, he, he looks like he was expecting a few minutes. Actually, some uh, I need an insight check from the party. Okay. Mine's probably... I think we're all at nine. Mine's 12. Oh, there was oh, a 13 yeah. and a four, so is that a one success? Nope. Somebody else is wrong. Uh, first roll that I saw was a 13 and a 4, which is a singular success. Um, he didn't, he doesn't appear to, or, no, he was, ex he seems like he was expecting to have a little bit more time to get composed before everybody was already there. Huh. Uh, um, yes, yes, coffee. Yeah, yeah. He sips on his coffee for a second as he's, look, seems like he's trying to Find the find the words. He's kind of delaying by holding on to his coffee and blowing on the coffee a little bit. And you you okay? You seem bothered. Uh, actually, a uh, a great opportunity uh, has has come up. My uh, my honored guests and an emissary from from exotic Katai. I'm I'm glad you're here. Uh, as I assume you've seen, uh, we've been honored by a visit by High Priest Belisi himself, uh, who has, uh, unfortunately, he couldn't stay there, stay any longer. He's a very busy man. Um, but uh, he's requested my assistance in a task, and I have uh, agreed to assist such a great and honorable personage as uh, the high priest Valisi there. Um, but certainly we owe you for your hospitality. If there's something we can do to help, please don't uh, hesitate to ask. Uh, exactly so. Um, it seems he has come into the knowledge of a very dangerous artifact. Um, and uh, it, in a um, an unearthed Archeronian ruin uh, near the near the mounds to cough. And uh, he has tasked us to uh, take control of the site and retrieve the artifact so that it can be secured before any 
any damage has been done. Uh, apparently there was a landslide that revealed an entrance to an Asheronian ruin that was heretofore unknown. That's very dire tidings. What, uh... Tiber, Tiber. Tiber says, that's, that's a great, great honor, Father. Will, uh, Isaac the Younger be, be taking the household guard and might I be entrusted with securing an augmentation force in their absence? No, no, and the security of the manor is my, and the ugh, words, the security of the manor falls to mine and your elder brother's responsibility, not to you. Don't try to take responsibility you have little knowledge of. And I won't need to send the household guard, Tiber. I'm sending you and the party, the adventurers here with us to escort you. You've been guests in my household and, and confidants of my, my errant dreamer of a child, and you've proven capable in the past of seeing to it that he can be successful. So hopefully I can count on you to act as his escort and see this task through to the end. As well, he, upon successful return, over. you will be bountifully rewarded upon successful return. Any any cursed scraps of Asherah on you? You need only say the word, but I would be only too happy to help contain them or destroy them. But uh, do we have any information on what exactly we're looking for? There are many terrible types of curses left by those cursed cursing people of cursing. Uh, he, he didn't say what the artifact was, only that you were to take control of, of the site. And so right about at this time, Isaac the Younger bursts into the room, like throws the door open, comes running into the room. Um, Father, I was unaware of, of any... Sorry, I'm having a trouble. I was unaware of any missions needing tasks, especially to these strangers. What is Tiber in here for? Why is he here instead of me? Isaac the Elder, then I don't need to discuss my decisions with my children. I'm sending Tiber on a task, and they are accompanying him. And Tiber, don't worry, Father. I won't let you down. I'll, I'll secure the artifact and return within the month. Isaac the Younger, you're sending him now with them? Give me an insight check, somebody. Don't care what, but please say before you hit the enter button. Somebody. Why don't you let me do it this time? Oh, yeah, you try. All right. That, I can re-roll that 15. Okay. Um, let's see. Huh. Very good. That is a total of three. Three. Oh, wow. I didn't expect that, but I did account for the possibility. So DC1 tells you he does seem to have actual concern about something here beyond just why wasn't I involved in the conversation. A DC2 shows that his concerns appear to be related to his brother, but maybe not his brother, directly. A DC-3 insight check tells you that he is definitely surprised about what's going on, and he is definitely concerned about something, and he is definitely not something that he believes his father knows about, or you guys, or his brother. Mm. I'm not going to say anything about it at the moment, obviously. And then now back to Isaac, uh, the elder. I'll do what I please. This is a task that the high priest Valisi himself has tasked for, asked for us. And we will not, bang his hands on the table, we will not let the high priest Valisi down. Yeah, but that old priest, enough! You'll obey my commands and watch your tongue. Yes, father. What do you need me to do? Nothing. I need you to do 
nothing. The adventurers here will see to the needs. And now he looks back at you guys. You'll be provided with any supplies, uh, uh, food and provisions enough for the journey. No horses, but Tiber will cover the traveling costs at the lodges. Uh, for the first two days of the journey, you'll be staying at the Queen's Ruby lo Travel Lodges on the King's Road to the south. After that, after the second stay, you'll head east towards the Catholic Pass following the Cavalry Road. In the mountain pass through the... In the mountains, there's a pass known as the Hook Gorge Pass. Once you... You'll need to pass through that site to get to the Asheronian ruins. There is an abandoned manor nearby. You are to commandeer it and use it as your base of operations. Secure the artifact, do whatever you need to, return with it. Any questions? Out of, out of character, Crumb, how, how, uh, how close is what he's describing to that haunted forest? Uh, and what he's describing sounds like it's... um pretty close to said haunted forest um so looking on the map just on the north edge of the forest there is a little bit uh the mountains kind of almost lead towards Krotoa. Croatoa. yep you'll be halfway between Croatoa and the forest and i'll just mention under you know not under my breath but in passing like if there is some remnant of foul asher on there it could explain the ruins or that the uh, uh, rumors about the forest nearby you know being ghost haunted things like that um uh, i can't shoot ghosts with arrows oh we'd be surprised depends on the type of ghost <laughs> you can always shoot a ghost whether it hurts you or not it's a totally different And I need one more insight check. And this one you're not likely to succeed, but we'll see as you're gaining some insight on Isaac Darren the Elder. Unless somebody objects, I'll try this one again. Go for it. Watch me get like two 20s or something. Right. I'm going to reroll the 16. Okay. Oh, are you kidding me? Wow. Four successes. <laughs> Four wow. successes? He's got two ones. <laughs> well, well, shit, there goes, motherfucker. There there goes my team. foreshadowing straight into revealing the plot. Okay. Huh. Um, so a DC it's 3... It's important for a witch hunter. <laughs> yes, yes it is. A DC 3 insight check tells you that the elder definitely knows something that he's not informing the party um and the directions that he gave you are very explicit on the way out they're very not explicit for the return journey mm -hmm. i had a feeling that, that this was intended to be a one-way trip but that's a, the one that's most fun to return from a dc4 um the thing that you notice with four successes is he is eyeballing his youngest son, Tiber, almost with concern that is not, he's just going to fail me again. Mm. He has been talking to you and Isaac the Elder, other than one sentence, he has talked to you and Isaac the Elder the entire conversation, which, from what you've seen, is completely expected. He pretty much ignores his youngest son. However, he is eyeballing, he's looking at, his eyes flicker to his youngest son more than at any other time that you have seen him. And there is some sort of concern here. What it is, you're not sure. Interesting. But this seems to be completely hinging on the youngest son. Well, I, uh, let us return and look at that map. 
so that we can become better acquainted with the route. Excellent, he says. Please uh, gather your belongings, let my chamberlain know what you need, and head off immediately. Chamberlains were more or less in charge of capitulating to Nazis. Uh, other chamberlains. Oh, okay. Right, right. The head butler. Mr. Butler, tell Mr. Butler what you need. He'll see to it. Little, little devil chamberlain joke for those of you in the, the audience. <laughs> I need a... All right. For you non-history nerds. <laughs> So, interesting. Uh, let me know when we are alone again to discuss things. Uh, you head back to the library area, and as long as you keep your voices low, you appear to be alone. Um, is Tiber with us? Tiber is with you. And he's going... And Tiber's looking like, he's sending me to do something? Oh, I hate to break this kid's heart. I get to, after the success of the trade agreement with the gem mines, he must finally be understanding that I can provide value and do something successful. You guys, you guys have helped me so much to prove to father that I can be successful. Oh my God. And now I've got another opportunity to do something that can you, save you know who would really love to hear this? Why don't you go find uh, Verai? Verai has been rooting for me, for you so hard. I bet Verai would be super excited. <laughs> he goes off to find Verai. Once he's out of your shot, this may shock you all, but I have a strong sense that we are not supposed to return from this mission, and perhaps it's unclear to me whether or not Tiber is supposed to. So what I would like our ranger to do or anybody else who has the right skills, to look at this map, look at the route he told us to take, and then we are going to pick a route that would allow us to ambush anyone who was planning to ambush us around on that route. Uh, okay. Actually, would be better off with uh, Zinya. She's got the uh, the military mind there. Yeah, I don't know whether it would be warfare or what. Yeah, I can go for the lay of the land thing. Um, and I can get you close, but it would be a warfare. Yeah. yeah. So let's just so again assume for the moment we are going to be ambushed. What are the likely, what's the most likely best ambush spot? And how do we get up? It's going to be at a pass. They're going to have the high ground. We're going to have the low ground. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a bottleneck where we probably will have a hard time getting what back. I what I don't understand is that everyone involved seemed legit concerned about Tiger. So either. Either they're going to have instructions not to kill him, but they're not sure if it'll be followed. Or if they'll be able to not do it because he's attacking them. Mm -hmm. But this means, if I'm right about all this, it means we somebody, somebody wants us dead and not in the normal way. And here we go with another question. Aren't we supposed to be on a greater mission? We are, but uh, Asheron is, stop me if you know this, uh, Asheron is a uh, very ancient evil empire, older than the, the, the Stygia stuff is basically built on its ashes. It's much worse than Stygia ever thought about being. So if there is something there, it is likely that our evil sorcerer guy either already has agents moving towards it, or... Yeah, this is our opportunity to deny it to him. So, uh, Zinya, we're going to ask you to roll to see if you can identify where they would most likely set up an ambush along our route. Okay. Without so it's going to be a warfare roll. Um, your warfare is 10 and 3, which I believe is the highest in the party. We've got a 9 and a blank, an 8 and a blank, and a 7 and a blank. We don't, uh, we don't rage a lot of war. 
Uh, that is one success. Um, so for W. Assisting with setting up or seeking ambush may add warfare dice pool instead of a single day twenty. I don't really understand strategist, but I think that means you get an extra die twenty here to roll also. Oh, that's a good talent to have for this. When assisting or when assisting with setting up or seeking an ambush, dang, that turned into three. <laughs> that's a two for one switcheroo. Oh, I am glad that we have our mercenary queen here then. Yes. So uh, as you're looking at the map and trying to find places that you would find an ambush, uh, what Thornicius said is primarily correct. Um, in the conversation, Isaac there and the elder talked about a specific pass to go through. Um, the, what did I call it? The blood gorge, the, the break beak gorge, um, hook gorge, the hook gorge pass. Uh, a place like that is obviously prime for an ambush because if there's only one way through, but others that aren't trying to travel through could get the high ground on you, could maybe close off the pass, that would be an obvious ambush site. However, you didn't just get one success, you got three successes. So you gained some insights beyond that. While that is an obvious place for an ambush, it also sounds like your destination is on just the other side of that. And you'd probably have to go through that pass anyways, unless you wanted to start trying to go climbing up the sides of mountains. So while that is the obvious ambush point, um, you could definitely see several other ambush points along the path to get there, considering how explicit he was in his directions for how to get there. Looking through the map, you can tell that his directions to get there are the most efficient directions. If you were to look at a map, go down the King's Road for a couple of days until you can get to the Cavalry Road. Take the Cavalry Road east. That is actually the directions that you would take to get there. However, on the Cavalry Road to the east, uh, you do note several places um, where it would be easy for a cavalry reg a cavalry group of some sort to be able to run you down in a field, um, you know, prime territory for cavalry groups out there. Um, you also see some rough terrain uh, listed on the map. Um, at, on once you're on the cavalry road itself, you see some rough terrain listed on the map near some forested areas to the east. Uh, that you could definitely see some some. Uh, places where if you had to pick an ambush, it would either be a cavalry ambush on the route or a forest ambush near some forests uh, rather than the gorge itself, because everybody's going to expect it at the gorge. That's what you would do, at least. So we're, looking for, so we're looking for a route that will let us ambush someone in an ambush position. Or somehow find a way around all of that to end up at our <clears throat> at our destination without them ever knowing we got there. You know, I, I really don't want to do that if we can avoid it because I don't want to tip our hand that we knew we were in for something. I, I'd rather it seem like, oh, well, you know, we just took this small detour, not we took an entirely different route. But if we can't avoid it, we can't avoid it. Taking a different route would potentially add days onto the journey, what's already going to be almost a week-long journey. And maybe I'm wrong about all this, and if I am, then, you know, we don't have to get our swords dirty. Or cameras, it's still dirty. I don't know, but I'm getting extra arrows. Or arrows, <laughs> right. Lots and lots of arrows. With Zhang's help, I'll maybe I'll get a couple of, you know, some of them voodoo arrows. The what? The hoodoo? <laughs> the hoodoo. The voodoo. The you do so well. <laughs> they may be risking their lives, but I am most certainly risking a best supporting actor nomination. <laughs> All right. so, I wonder if there really are Asheronian ruins there, or if they were like, oh yeah, well that will definitely get the witch hunter out there. I mean... You could always ask the cleric. 
Well, uh, the I, problem is they, the cleric was literally just here saying. <laughs> so Isaac Darren the Elder, in the conversation, he didn't seem to be lying for anything that you caught. There's oh, no, definitely he, some... He might believe it. Right. Somebody else, like, they could have been Vasily making the whole thing up, but who knows? I mean, I, but I, I'm going to have to, I mean, I have to assume that it really is there. It would endanger everybody if we did it. So? Seems we need to get our uh, equipment together. Grab your shit and go. Um, let's make sure to make some uh, copies of maps so that we have something to go by. Making a copy of a map is a rather difficult process. It's not ex like there's a photocopier. <laughs> um, you could hire somebody to make it. Um, if you wanted to make a copy yourself, it would be craft. Sounds like a job for Michael. I have the scribe, Xerox and the blind. <laughs> you could certainly have one made by the time you got back. Okay. Well, that would help. <laughs> well, hmm. Anybody here got, like, total recall abilities? No. no. Photographic memory? Like the movie? No, it's perfect oh. memory. <laughs> there That's is not. a talent for that, actually. Yeah. It's it's under like research or something I saw. Observation. Yeah. Well, I'm good at observation, but I don't think I ever took that one. So Screw. grab your shit and go. Grab our shit and go. Can we get horses? Mm, like it. At least. Hmm. Wants to have a half a chance if somebody comes chasing after us. Uh, the Darrens are not providing you with any horses, and y'all don't have any, so... Now, why don't we spin by the other people's estate and just let them know what's going on? Wouldn't that be wrong? You what? You head to the Bergeon estate. Well, we can do that, I guess, yeah. You're, uh, uh, you're welcomed in. Just so that somebody else knows, you know, what's... Can you give them the quick rundown? Yeah. And then Lady let um I wish we were on too. Uh Corin and Wynn, his dad is Wynn the dad or is Laris? Wynn, I believe. Wynn's the old one. Yeah, Wynn's the old one. Uh Corin and Laris are there, who you inform. Um and, and Corin's like, I'm coming with you. You know what? Usually I say I've had quite enough of him, but this time I'm all right with this. I'm coming with you. Right? Have him meet us outside on the King's Road. Don't uh, walk out of town with us. I yeah. don't want to let but, anybody on. Does he That's generally? Do they generally concur with my suspicions here? He said, "Yeah." Um, he actually says uh, um, that that area. Uh, he has heard uh, rumors of some sort of landslide. Uh, there, there was some sort of earthquake over there, or a landslide, or something that he's heard rumors about. Um, so, and um, that's also a place that has historically been known for Acheronian ruins. What can you tell me about the the whole haunted forest thing? It's supposed to be right there. Mm. He says. Well, I mean, your basic is here, there be monsters. And he says just a couple of things, you know, the black forest and werewolves and shit. But um, he goes, in reality, it's uh, uh, there are definitely uh, fables and fairy tales. There are, there are creatures in those forests that man is not meant to see and is not friendly towards man. But for the most part, it's the stories are probably just brigands, thieves retreating into the trees, uh -huh. many of which are never heard from again. Though I will add, the trees or the brigands? Yes. Mm. <laughs> I 
any way we could arrange like a a backup cavalry to be a couple days behind us just show up, just show up please just because i really feel we're going to need a cavalry <laughs> i like this idea that we just show up with like you know the entire army at our back horsemen yeah oh were you expecting trouble crest. yeah <laughs> Were you I mean, if you've got the explorers? No. <laughs> I mean, if you've got the funds for it, we could make it happen. But yeah, I'm pretty no, sure we're no, trying no. to save the funds for actually restoring the border kingdom from merc with mercenaries rather than that. Uh, and one final thought: I am disinclined to allow anyone, priest of Mitra or otherwise, to get a hold of an evil artifact. Uh, Uh, he what says, about that priest that you punched? Didn't you give him one of those evil artifacts? No, oh, I burned it in his temple. Ah. Let's see. Uh, Wynn says, Well, if you do find an artifact, I, uh, I know I, I have a compatriot of mine that I, that I very much trust uh, in, uh, in Shamar. If you can take it to him, he can see to it that that artifact is secured. Well, that's where we're at anyway. Of course, we'll have to have some plausible reason so that we don't look like we totally... Interesting. All right, then. All the time. <laughs> People lose things, get held up at, at, at knife point. It happens all the time. He gives you information on how to find his compatriot in Shamar to be determined later. Oh, I thought he was going with us. No, no, the dad said that. Oh. The dad said that. Gotcha. Yeah, if it's good enough, yeah, his word's good with, with me. Yeah. Very good. Uh, Corinth says, <laughs> I'll... All right, I'll go ahead and head out of town now, and I'll meet you an hour south of town on the King's Road. Do be careful. The, uh, I assume that whoever is meant to intercept us is already moving out or has already moved out. He or says, I will out. do. Or will be moving out. Or will have been. You Father, I'm going to the armory. I'm going to grab proper gear for this journey. Yes. And he heads out. I need 10 rounds of arrows. <laughs> and one gold piece per load. Yeah, I'll, I'll spend it. I'll spend it. It's worth it. We really haven't been making much money lately, like so. Yeah, well, those arrows are expensive, but... Yeah. Have you tried using, like, you know, like... That Dollar Shave Club arrow. <laughs> <laughs> you get what you pay for, though, man. You know, those things, the blades fall right off even before you shoot the arrow. It's... <laughs> I wouldn't know anything about Dollar Shave Club. <laughs> so now the party sets out? Yes. Yeah, I just, I really hate to not have Vera here for the, the observation parts of this and the sneaky parts of this. All right. You're buying loads of arrows, yes? Yes. Are any other last second purchases being made? Declare it now or you don't get it. Brigandine. I don't think we have the money for it. <laughs> <laughs> An extra brigandine jacket. <laughs> I'd love to have a compass, but I don't think we have money for it. For spyglass. I think again. I have a compass. Do we? Let me check. I know I was buying a uh, uh, maybe not a monocle spyglass. I do have maps of the current region. I don't know what that means. Oh, do uh, you? Yeah. Of Ophir, because that Ophir is her oh. home, actually. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then uh, let's copy shit onto it from the other. Yeah. Okay. She has the maps. Yeah, it's in my inventory already. Uh, good. I told you she was useful. I have a riding horse too. But yes, but we had to leave those behind. It. Oh. I you can ride. Okay. 
No, I just thought it was illegal for women here. Am I riding horse fine? Only if here? they're wearing non-metal skirts. Oh. Well, you can't wear them after Labor Day anyway. <laughs> it is after Labor Day. You can no longer wear white. <laughs> well, metal skirts. Or wait, is it wear white only after Labor Day? It's actually shoes. Oh. Can't wear white shoes after Labor Day. Gotcha. <laughs> I've never listened to that. All right. Now Party look where it's got you, crippled on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> All right now, okay. <laughs> Just saying. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> a point and the party I have to give him a goal for that one. <laughs> yeah, right? Right? 50 You're bonus experience at the end of the day for that. I guess you will get to see the maps now. <laughs> party leaves an hour south outside of town on the King's Road. You do catch up to uh, to Corin Berjon. Um, Corin and Tiber. They give each other a little bit of the eye, but all in all, they, they're friendly with each other. They just, they're not exactly happy, friendly families, even if the two of them seem to get along. A little will they won't they situation. <laughs> a little will they won't they situation. Tiber seems to like the way Corrin looks. Um, and you travel south along the King's Road. The King's Road itself is the main trade thoroughfare. It is the artery of Ophir. Um, yes, Ophir has trade to the north with Nemedia, to the west with Aquilonia, to the e northeast with Corinthia even. But the money comes from the south, from Koth, from Karaja, from Stygia. This is a landlocked nation. They don't have ports, so their roads are their lifeblood. And this road in particular is very wide, very well taken care of. It's not paved, but it is cobbled for the most part. Um, very well maintained. You're not going to accidentally walk off this road without realizing it. Um, oh, you just watch me. <laughs> along uh, along the road, um, there are regular, especially for the first, for the as you're traveling along throughout the day, there are regular places. There's a stables over here to buy the best horses in Ophir, and a stables over there that also says they have the best horses in Ophir. There's a winery nice. over there, um, and there's fields and manors and uh, and 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 uh, hostels and lodges and and the farther away from the city you get there the farther they are apart um, but there is all manner of places for business opportunities and and warehouses and and stables and restaurants and bars and taverns and and all of those things that a traveling particularly traveling merchant caravan could possibly need along this road. Um, the farther you, away you get from the city, the farther apart they get, the less likely you are to always have somebody around. Or I should say, the more likely you are to be in a period of time where you don't actually see another traveler. Um, the road itself is very well populated. Um, so there are caravans going back and forth. Being on foot, not carrying cargo, you're going faster than most cargo-carrying wagons, but slower than any mounted groups. Um, so you'll walk past quite a few, and then you'll go for an hour, and, and maybe maybe you won't see anybody else going your direction for an hour, and then you'll see some people coming back this way, and there will be a trading caravan or... Um, once or twice, there will be a, 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 a mercenary company, an, an obvious mercenary company on horses just riding past you hard, like damn near runs you off the road as they're riding down. Or every now and then there will be a, uh, somebody, just a lone rider, riding like the devil is chasing them down the street. and Everybody's basically having to get out of their way as they're riding like the devil. 
but for the most part, it's just people on the roads. Uh, you know, a, a couple here, a family there, a small a, a small merchant. You know, a wagon with with one or two people on the wagon carrying goods from a farm into town. For the most part, things like that. Uh, uh, the most ornate that you see is at one point in time, uh, you see a a very ornate, well-armed group of either very uniformed and well-funded guards, uh, mercenaries, or a personal guard of some sort carrying a, uh, a curtained palanquin. Not even, not even like a carriage, a palanquin, meaning there's four people, one on each corner of it, carrying this thing. Small curtain palanquin um, is probably the most ornate that you see. There's like gold drapery around it, and they're walking towards the city as you're walking away from the city. Are you time or recording to where it is split between the two high priests? Like, is there any factionalism there? Uh, Corin doesn't really pay attention to the the inner workings of the church. He is a follower of the Church of Mitra, but, you know, it's... The, the church here seems like it's more worried about the church than it is the people, and it's not really something that I that I care about a whole lot. Um, Tiber says that the, his father has long been a follower of and ally of High Priest Valisi. Um, and everything church related that for as long as he can remember, everything, every interaction and relationship with the church he's had has been through High Priest Velisi or Velisi's other acolytes. It has never been to the church itself or to other high priests. It's always my father is a follower of High Priest Velisi, who is a high priest of Mitra. Interesting. Has he ever had ties to any other organization other than? Oh yeah, my father has ties all over the place. No, but when it comes, Belisi, hmm? has he ever? How did he come to be a priest of Mitra? Did he come from another organization? He doesn't he know the origin. He doesn't know the origin story of High Priest Belisi. Gotcha. As far as he's concerned, High Priest Belisi just always has been. Gotcha. Might have wanted to look into that before we left, but that's all right. I'm sure it won't bite up in the ass later. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> Bree Bubbles, hey, welcome to the party. So, um, you get a good day's hard hike and walk south of the city along the King's Road. Um, and uh, come across, uh, come upon the first way station that uh, Isaac the Elder has directed you to. The Queen's Ruby is the name of it. Um, the Queen's Ruby is a very well-to-do lodge, traveler's lodge. Uh, it's got walls. It has multiple buildings. Like it is a whole, like, it is a whole like establishment unto itself. There are multiple buildings. There are walls. Big sign. The Queen's Ruby um, uh, to go in. Uh, there's a decent amount of, of guards around it. Um, as you make it to the Queen's Ruby, it's it's after it's it's almost dinner time at this point. It's almost dinner time at this point. Um, you head in. Uh, pretty much as soon as they see Tiber Darren, they, they don't even stop you on your way in. Um, uh, they see that you're not on horses, so they don't direct you to the stables. Uh, they do, however, say... Uh, they do, however, uh, say to Tiber, Oh, young Sir Lord, the... Uh, the guard's barracks is in the back if you want to have your staff stay there at a discounted price. Uh, otherwise, rooms are at the going rate for each of them. Tiber says, very good. Let's go win. 
the the central building, the Queen's Ruby itself, um, is a is a, a rather large building, uh, four stories tall, which is unheard of almost. It's not castle size or anything, but it is a a four story tall building with a good size base, uh, and almost the entirety of the first floor is is a big U-shaped bar surrounded by sitting room. In the middle is a long table, and then around the bar, kind of in a, a semicircle for the rest of the round the bar are various tables and booths and more tables. Um, some of them have really like tall, full walls behind them so that there's a little bit of privacy in them. They even have curtains available on some of, uh, on some of the tables and uh, versus say, on some of the booths. Uh, but there's lots of tables. There's fireplace on either wall, fireplace on either wall, um, and three different uh, three different innkeepers, bartenders, tavern keepers, waiters, whatever you want to say. Uh, working along the large U-shaped bar area itself in the middle. Um, you smell fresh bread. You smell roasting meat. You see multiple large kegs and barrels of, of various drinks available. Mm -hmm. Me being on duty as I am, uh, I'm going to look around and see if anybody is paying particularly particular attention to our arrival and or anyone leaving almost immediately after we arrived. So Observation. I'm for, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for lookouts, basically. Yep. <clears throat> one success. Uh, with one success in observation, uh, you you definitely can tell there's a, like, there's a major D as you're yeah. going in that's walking you in, definitely pays attention to you. Um, the one of the bartenders obviously eyes you up and down as you as the group is walking in. Uh, there's a waiter that's going to take you guys to a table, paying very close attention to you. Um, as far as non-staff paying attention to you, you definitely do notice that there are some strong arms that that identify you. Like there's you know there's a noble sitting at this table and his guard looks you up and down as you're coming in. And a, and a couple of people are definitely threat assessing you, uh, but you don't notice anything out of the ordinary. Okay. Uh, the Mater D takes you guys to a, a table, a big like hexagonal table. So it's two to a side, up to 12 people total at the table. Um, takes orders, takes drinks. What can I get for you guys? Wine, wine, beer, I, uh, I, you know, food, meals, rest. How can we here at the Queen's Ruby, or sorry, at the Ruby Queen help you? How can we serve you on this fine day? And, and young Lord, will, uh, Will all of your staff be staying here? Will you be staying here overnight? And will your staff need rooms as well? <laughs> uh, Tybra looks around and... Oh. You guys know this is the first time I've ever traveled outside the city without uh, house guard. Hmm. That's interesting. I'm actually not sure. That could be. <laughs> like with the house guard, I'd just give us a couple minutes. Go ahead, bring us some wine. Give us a couple minutes. You know, with the house guard, it's pretty straightforward. They get to stay in the in the in the barracks. That's what it's there for. But you guys aren't just like guards your friends so I, i'm fine with staying in the barracks it might let us keep a better eye better watch on people and it would be what people would expect hmm. other than maybe zang zang looks too important to stay in a barracks obviously obviously <laughs> obviously <laughs> 
as he sips with I his cannot hand. hide my regal <laughs> knee. You call this swill wine? This is grape juice that's been run through a fire. <laughs> you call this olive oil for extra virgin? <laughs> not after Thornaceous has been here. Nope, nope, definitely not. I've heard about his olive oil addiction. <laughs> Popeye Just was very mad. Lathering. <laughs> Doing the backstroke. Uh, okay, so yeah, so I'll get I'll get you guys set up in the barracks quarters, and and then Zang and Corin and I will get. Corin says, "No, nah, on this one, just let me fade into the guard. We don't want to call me out." He goes, "Oh, okay, that that makes sense, I, think, I guess." I think it would be safer if you you stayed with Tiber, just in case. I mean, Zeng melts people's faces off. I don't, I don't think he's going to have a problem. <laughs> Corin goes, I mean, I'll take your word for it, but I think for this trip, since we're doing it for the Darren's, it's probably best if uh, I blend in as just a, as, as a strong arm rather than well, coming out myself as a bird. A person, you're more of a personal bodyguard. A very personal bodyguard. Tiber says, "Yeah, uh, yeah, that could work. My, he, yeah, he could stay with me." <laughs> All right. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll stay up in here then. Go ahead, all the mercenary barracks and stuff. Yeah. So uh, Tiber arranges rooms, uh, basically two rooms for the nobles, with Tiber having his personal guard staying in his area, uh, and then four uh, four spots in the barracks for the four of you guys. Um, after that is determined, food is brought, very tasty, little bland. They could use a little bit more spice. Um, little bland. But very well cooked, perfectly cooked. You know what spice we use in Zamora? Thievery. And betrayal! Mm. <laughs> um, immediately following the meal, though, during the meal, the uh, the staff is giving, uh, giving you guys a little bit of a side eye, and immediately following the meal, one of the waiters comes up going, Well, sir, would you care for me to show your, show your, uh, your staff to their quarters, or... Would you care for them to stay here in the great room with the rest of the travelers? Ah, uh, well, it would be untoward if I answered on his behalf. So, a tiber's like, oh, he, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, but he's staying with me. He he he's with me though. Of course, uh, quite. It would be. Uh, quite untoward of us to not show anything but the most welcome of guests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, so the, the staff member shows the four of you um, to the barracks. They call it the barracks. Now, we'll get to the four of you in the barracks first. You guys get out there. It's a whole nother pub. <laughs> it is a much rowdier, much darker, um, much less well-appointed pub. Working man's pub. It's a bar. There's food if you want it. Uh, but there are people here arm wrestling. There are people here throwing darts. There are people here making bets on a rat race. A literal box with rats in it, betting who, which rat is going to get to the end first. Uh, this is rowdy. This is fun. And as you get in, basically everybody's like, ah, come get a drink. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take water. <laughs> oh, water. What the hell is going on with you? 
You're going to be staying with us. You're going to be drinking with us. Here's a beer. I had a bad run in with alcohol recently. <laughs> it was wine. <laughs> yeah. And and plus, you got tied up after it. All's fair that ends well. <laughs> <laughs> there were naked men. You were theoretically happy. <laughs> gotcha, man. T-shirt that says that. Awkward. <laughs> no, don't tie me up. No, I can't help. Oh. <laughs> By the way, chat, there were cultists, and they were going to sacrifice him before they got cut in half by the rest of the party. Yeah. Thank God. Just so you know. <laughs> he still liked it, though. <laughs> Honestly, he was drugged out for it. He didn't have any idea what was going on. Yeah, but right. if he'd have been sober, <laughs> if he'd have been sober. Would have been different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anywho. Why is there a random foot by your head? Whose foot is that? This is my foot. <laughs> You've been doing yoga? How is your foot by enormous, your head? I got an enormous Charlie horse the other night and it's been killing my leg for the last three days and I need to stretch. Not like, why. Constantly. How? <laughs> he spends a lot of time with his legs back over his shoulders. It's, uh... <laughs> I it's thought that was easy. your job. I'm not that flexible. <laughs> <laughs> Bartender, make that a double. <laughs> so, here for the night at the Ruby Queen Travel Lodge, is there anything any of you are doing or just eating, drinking, being merry, and going to sleep? Uh, I might have, maybe this is a good spot to wait for um, our rogue, because we might have information gathering to have her do. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. It's a good place to pick up some information that maybe not, maybe wouldn't exactly. be in the in more proper areas. Yeah. So, like, I'm hearing gripes about this or that, you know, this boss or that boss or Anything along the road coming to or from us, I'm interested in. Like that whole ambush being set up for these poor people. Yeah, we want to know about that. All right. Well, then, ladies and gentlemen, with that, we have come to our time. We will be calling it up here after dinner, but before bedtime at the Ruby Queen Nobles Travel Lodge. Uh, so... Thank you for joining us here at the Architects of Fate. And we got a lot of more exciting stuff coming up with you on this channel over the next week. For example, tomorrow, Dungeons and Dragons, Edenia. Nothing cures a bout of amnesia like a night out at the casino. But is the crew having too much fun to notice that something wicked brewing in the bowels of the casino? And who is that fellow making eyes at the game from across the floor? Find out this week on Edenia, season three. Episode 5, The House Always Wins. And yes, it is Season 3. What happened to Season 2? Thursday, uh, the 7th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Dear supervillains, are you there? It's me, Bad Horse. And after the antics of your last outing, I can tell more than a few of you will end up being my mayor. But anything could happen in the city. In the city? Anything could happen in the city's only mine school. I think that is that supposed to be mime school? No, nope, it's know. a school for miners now. It says in the city's only mine school, anything could happen. Not Find out this prepared. week if the pish position in the evil league of evil gets filled. Survey says nay. Bad horse is evil league of evil. Season one, episode two, mime over matter. Mm -hmm. Friday, right now. what Star Trek story will you write with the title, The Meemaw Imperative? Join Simon and Rufus the Robot and help them write that story. Watch 
the Architect's Fate of Fate cookie truck on Friday, the 8th at 7 p.m. Eastern. And we are out. Ooh, delightful. All right, uh, you get 15.